There's a great deal to learn and more importantly to understand about the technical aspects of road and bridge construction. It's not expected that every engineer in the RTA will have expert knowledge of every detail of road and bridge construction. There's just too much to know. It's important for your own professional development to gather a reasonable understanding of the critical road and bridge construction processes. The better your knowledge of processes in the field, the more effective you'll be working on projects for the RTA. Whatever task or activity you're involved with, whether it be the supervision of a construction of a retaining wall, the overseeing of a construction crew, or the installation of board piles by a contractor. You need to get involved! Getting involved means doing your homework before the activity and understanding the processes related to the work at hand and making sure that the processes are undertaken using good practices to ensure quality products at the end. Now good practice is as defined in the RTA model specifications. This knowledge or technical know-how comes from several different sources. It might be from the academic world. Now, you remember university, let's hope so. It might be from lessons learned from past projects. Now, there may be occasions when you see a need to modify the specifications to meet the needs of your particular project or situation. These occasions should be rare, but they do occur from time to time. There are occasions when you get out in the field and you'll find the specifications just can't be made to work. It doesn't happen often, but it does occur. The message is, don't take it upon yourself to modify or to relax the requirements of a specification without prior consultation with engineering technology branch. This branch has access to all the in-house knowledge within the RTA for a particular problem. They can even go outside the RTA to find a solution. Now by channeling your particular issue through these guys, hopefully you'll find a specific answer for your particular issue. If you do it yourself, you might and probably will do it wrong. There will be situations that despite your best efforts, you feel as though you're out of your depth and trying to apply the specification to your particular circumstances. Or despite the best efforts of everyone around, the specification just doesn't work in reality. When this happens, and it happens reasonably often, there are a range of expert advisors within engineering technology, as well as one of your more experienced colleagues, surveillance officers or supervisors, that you can call on for advice and guidance. In all likelihood, they would have come across your problem before and can provide you with a ready solution. Don't be afraid to ask for advice. In engineering, ignorance is rarely bliss. Whatever you do, make sure you don't just become the mailbox, you know, the conduit between the problem and the solution. For your own professional development, make sure you understand the problem and how it's been solved. This is a good principle to follow. Of course, we all know that there will be situations when due to the pressure of workloads, perhaps you will need to be satisfied with being just the mailbox. But make every effort to understand the process that is being carried out. Modern construction and contract administration processes rely on documented quality systems, the paperwork. The theory, and hopefully the reality, is that the paperwork, that is, the work method statements and ITPs, will help ensure the construction of a quality product on the ground. If you follow the documents properly, nothing that needs to be done will be missed. Everyone involved in the process of the construction will know what they need to do and hopefully understand why they need to do it. However, experience has shown that this is often not the case, and the quality plan is an on-the-shelf document that doesn't make it to the coalface. While it's important to review the quality method statements and the ITPs for completeness, it's also very important to discuss the work with the contractor beforehand to ensure that the construction is being planned properly. It's also important that you and your colleagues get out on the site where the work is being done to ensure that the plan is being followed. This is called supervision and surveillance. Don't assume that everything is all right just because the documents say so, or you're told so. Check that this is the case. Take pride in the finished product you're building. Stay involved, it's your job to manage the work. 